NIL studio. I, Dr. Dupasna Ray, shall discuss with you today protecting child rights, the legal framework. So, what are the legal rights that one has while protecting the child rights? Let us start with education. The 86th Amendment of the Constitution on the Fundamental Right to Education for the 6 to 14 years age group has also led to the inclusion of an additional clause under Article 51A that imposes a fundamental duty upon parents or guardians to provide opportunities for education of their children between age of 6 and 14 years. A significant effort in this direction is also seen in the right to education. This came into force from 1st April 2010. The first legal act that we would like to discuss with you is the Child Marriage Restraint Act of 1929. As you all know, traditionally child marriage has been one of the very problematic issues of Indian society. So, laws restraining the practice of child marriage has been in force in India since 1929. According to the Child Marriage Restraint Act 1978, the minimum legal age of marriage stands at 18 years for women and 21 years for men. Punishment for male adults below 21 years of age is also punishable to the parent as well as the guardian concerned in the case of child marriage. Next, we shall discuss with you Health Maintenance Organization Act 1973. This act is to assist and encourage the local and state government on profit organizations, insurance companies and agency to change the health delivery system so that improved care could be provided. This service includes other illness and wellness related care as well. The next let us discuss Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act 1974. This act provides a rational centered approach on child abuse and child neglected make funds available for research identification of causes, prevention and treatment for the establishment of regional child abuse centers. The Children Act of 1960. The Children Act of 1960 in India, which is again amended in 1977, provides for the care, maintenance, welfare, training, education and rehabilitation of delinquent children. It provides the neglected and destitute, socially handicapped, uncontrollable, victimized and delinquent children. In Article 39F, the Constitution of India provides that the state shall in particular direct its policy towards securing that childhood and youth are protected against moral and material abandonment. The next we shall discuss the Education for All Handicapped Children Act 1975. The Education for All Handicapped Children Act mandate state education agencies to develop plan to provide full educational opportunities to all school age handicapped children. Public Law 94 and 142 requires that an individualized education program be prepared for each child. This has again been incorporated in a very big way in the Sarvasiksha Abhiyan and DP. EP. The Education for All Handicapped Children Act 1975. Taking from its predecessor, we, the main concentration in this act is the making of the individualized education plan. The IEP must include related services that will assist the child to obtain maximum benefits from the educational program. This law mandates placement of handicapped children in the least restrictive educational environment, preschool program for children ages 3 to 5 years, as well as program for children ages 18 to 21 years were to be made available by September 1, 1980 unless such provisions were inconsistent with the state law. Next, let us discuss the Juvenile Justice Act of 1986. With the implementation of Juvenile Justice Act 1986, 
it extends to the whole of India except the state of Jammu and Kashmir. The new act has come into force from 2nd October 1987. Some of the special features of the Juvenile Justice Act are the following. It provides a uniform legal framework to juvenile justice in the country so as to ensure that no child under any circumstances is put in jail or police lockup. It envisages specialized approach towards prevention and treatment of juvenile delinquency in keeping with the developmental needs of the children. It establishes norms and standards for administration of juvenile justice in terms of investigation, care, treatment and rehabilitation. It lays down appropriate linkage and coordination between the formal system of juvenile justice and voluntary organization. It specially defines the role and responsibilities of both. Child Labor Protection Act 1986. This act flows from the Article 39 that the tender age of children shall not be abused and the citizen are not enforced by economic necessity to enter a vocations unsuited to their age of strength. This act protects children to be employed in dangerous works and industries up to 14 years. So this is one of the impact that the Child Labor Protection and Regulation Act brought in 1986. So main features of the acts are as follows. The first, no child shall be required or permitted to work in any establishment in excess of such numbers of hours as may be prescribed for such establishment or class of establishment. Second, the period of work on each day shall so fixed that no period shall exceed three hours and that no child shall work for more than three hours before he has an interval for rest for at least one hour in between the work he has been doing. The period of work of a child shall be so arranged that inclusive of his interval for rest under subsection it shall not be spread over more than 6 hours including the time spent in waiting for work on any day. No child shall be permitted or required to work between 7 pm and 8 am. No child shall be required or permitted to work over time. No child shall be required or permitted to work in any establishment on any day on which he has already been working in another establishment. Every child employed in an establishment shall be allowed in each week a holiday of one whole day. Children are not permitted to work in occupations concerned with passengers and goods mail transport by railway, carpet weaving, cement manufacturing, cleaning ash pits and building construction operation, cloth printing, dyeing and manufacturing of matches, explosive and fireworks, berry making, wool cleaning etc. So we, in an overall way we have discussed 8 major points on the labor act. There are other acts also that has come up, one being the National Charter for Children 2004, the next is the National Plan of Action for Children 2005 and Commission for Protection of the Rights of the Child 2005. The National Commission for Protection of the Rights of the Child NCPCR was set up in March 2007 under the Commission for Protection of Child Rights Act. 2005, an act of the parliament of December 2005. The commission's mandate is to ensure that all laws, policies, programs and administrative mechanisms are in consonance with the child's right perspective as enshrined in the constitution of India and also the UN convention on the rights of the child. Thus, in this session, we have discussed what are the major acts that have come into enforcement to protect the right of the child. Awareness regarding these rights are essential 
so that when required one can make others aware and can take required step for protecting a child from any kind of child abuse. Thank you.